Hey everybody, James here, and I'm going to apologize right off the bat if this video is a little bit louder than normal. My 3D printers are running 24-7 right now, and once you find out what I'm working on, well, you're probably going to understand why I don't want to turn them off even to record a quick video. So no matter where you turn in the media right now, you're guaranteed to be reading about COVID-19. COVID-19 is a virus, it's a pandemic, it's arrived pretty much everywhere in the world. It's causing the people to have to socially distance or to self-isolate or quarantine. And beyond that, it is taxing the medical care systems of pretty much every place that it's in. And one of the things that we're running into at this point is the fact that they're just running out of gear. We weren't prepared for such a widespread pandemic at this point. And you've probably, if been, you've been following 3D printing for a while, you've probably seen articles all over the place that people are designing respirators and filtered masks and all sorts of stuff to be able to help with this. And a lot of them are promising. A lot of them are also potentially being designed by people that don't exactly know what would be safe and what isn't safe. Um, but everywhere you look, there is stuff coming out that is actually going to be helpful, that's going to be useful, and stuff that's being approved for use in hospitals. In fact, a couple days ago, I saw a tweet that was sent out to people in the Ottawa area, where I happen to be, and they're saying that Health Ottawa is beginning to run low on face shields and masks, and they need people to be able to step up if they can and start 3D printing parts to be able to build face shields. And that's exactly what all of the printers I have that are capable of printing PETG are working on right now. So this is the design that has apparently been approved for use in uh, Ottawa hospitals. It's a pretty simple design. Uh, it takes about two hours to print. It prints um, as two pieces, this piece and a small buckle that goes on the back. And it's designed to take a piece of acrylic that's been bent in between the clasp here and hold onto it. And then there's cutaway pieces that allow them to put a rubber strap inside it so you can wear it on your face. So again, they're, they're not expensive prints. They don't take too long. And if you have a printer that can print PETG that is, I think, at least 200 by 200, then you're ready to go. And if you have something like a CR10 that has a 300 by 300 bed, you can actually get away with printing four of these in one shot at a little under eight hours. Now, things to know about this design. This design is not perfect. It's not designed to be a replacement for regular face masks. It shields your face from incoming particulate, you know, somebody coughed or whatever, um, but it's, it's not, you don't want to have a false sense of security with it. What it seems to really be made for is to protect the masks that they're already wearing, the ones that are filtering. So if somebody coughs towards you or there's some sort of contaminant or whatever, it'll hit the shield before it gets to the mask, which means the mask may have to be le uh, sterilized less often, may get longer use out of it, because the mask can only be sterilized so many times and it takes, you know, a specific amount of time to actually sterilize them. So I'm going to include a link down below. If you're not in the Ottawa area, now's the time to start asking questions. If you've got a 3D printer, you can be helping. You know, there may be ones that have already been approved in your area. You've probably seen Joel Telling's video, you know, the Prusa design that uh, prints off and can have a, um, a protective barrier clip to it. Um, all throughout the community, I see people are getting into this, and I figured I might as well put out this video so you follow me and not them, or you don't realize that there are designs out there. Well, many areas already have an approved design. And if there isn't an approved design in your, your area, maybe you're going to be the one to ask the question. It doesn't hurt to fire off a couple of emails. These people are obviously very busy, so you don't want to harass them, but you could be the one to start it. We can't get ahead of the pandemic at this point because it's already here. But if places haven't run out of equipment and this is the kind of stuff that's going to help them, we might be able to get ahead of that. And I would rather print way too many of these and have them not be used than not print enough. So again, I'm including a link down below. It uh, seems to be approved for use around Ottawa and I'm seeing requests coming in from like retirement homes and nursing homes um, where because all the equipment's being obviously diverted to hospitals, it's becoming harder and harder to come by and this is the type of stuff that might be able to prolong the use of their existing equipment. So I'm also going to apologize. Some of my future videos may be delayed because I'm not going to take the time off from printing until I know that, you know, we've met the, met the demand or something's changed. So this is my priority right now. Um, so until the next one, stay safe, you know, follow, follow the instructions that are being put out for your area. If you're being told to self-isolate, if you're to being told to quarantine, you're to tell being told to shelter in place, well, do that. It's for your safety and it's for safety of people around you. I have a loved one that has a compromised immune system and, you know, I hear people saying I would, you know, I'd just get the virus and get it over with and stuff like that. And it's not always you that you should be worried about. There are plenty of people in your community that can't afford to get it. So stay safe until the next one. And of course, as always, stay creative.